Hi, myself Dr. Vivek Shashindran and today we will be talking about traumatic facial palsy. Well, in my previous video, I did discuss about Bell's palsy, which is probably one of the most common causes for facial palsy. Now, however, with the increase in the incidence of road traffic accidents, we do fairly come across a large subset of patients with post-traumatic facial palsy. Now, generally, when the patient has uh, associated head injury, facial injury, it's very common to come across fractures of the temporal bone or the bone around the ear. Now, what we need to realize is the fact that a major portion of the facial nerve actually travels through the temporal bone before it comes out to supply the muscles of the face. And whenever you have any kind of a fracture involving the temporal bone, there is a high chance that the facial nerve gets injured. Now, what are the possible ways in which the facial nerve can get injured in case of a, a temporal bone fracture? Now, sometimes you could have a facial fracture line running over the facial canal. Now, what happens is that subsequent to this fracture line running over the facial nerve, you can have edema of the entire facial nerve. The second scenario is that you can have impingement of the facial nerve. So if there is a displaced bony spicule of the facial canal impinging on the facial nerve, that compression itself can kind of reduce the blood supply to the facial nerve and can give rise to facial palsy. So what you need to do is to kind of identify. So whenever a patient has facial palsy, we need to kind of differentiate or identify if it is just a nerve edema or if it's actually an impingement of a bony spicule. Now something that can kind of help us differentiate this is the time of onset of facial palsy. So if it is usually a fracture line over the facial nerve, if it is just edema settling in, it is usually a delayed facial palsy. That is the patient probably remains absolutely fine without any facial symptoms for the initial few hours. However, if it is some kind of an impingement or a transection, so sometimes a nerve can be cut through and through. In those situations, the onset of facial asymmetry will be immediate. So at what point you identify the facial palsy, it kinds of give you a hint. However, you have to do a radiological evaluation to kind of differentiate between an impingement and just a simple fracture line. Now, most of these cases will have to be treated with steroids, that is a mainstay. Now, recovery of facial palsy is something that can take up to six months. Now, if you have a radiological evidence of impingement, if the facial nerve is completely compressed by a bony spicule, a fractured segment of bone, then those are situations where you would probably have to go in for a facial nerve decompression. So what you would do is you would explore the ear, expose the facial nerve, and you can kind of radiologically correlate where exactly is the impingement, get to that segment and lift up those bony fragments impinging or sitting on the facial nerve. So that will kind of release the pressure over the facial nerve and then you expect this facial nerve to heal. And once the facial nerve is decompressed, the outcomes, the best outcomes would take at least nine months from the time of surgery. So that is something that you have to keep in mind. Similarly, rarely you may see a complete transection, a completely cut nerve. So if it is something which you can approximate with sutures, that is one option. Or if there is significant gap between the cut ends of the facial nerve, the next option would be to consider some kind of a nerve graft. Now any grafting procedures usually would take at least a year or so to kind of bring about a change. So the time is important. So what you need to realize is to kind of identify the type of injury that you have landed with and depending on that, select the appropriate treatment option for the patient. Thank you for watching.